first up, let's talk Jeff Levy, which I I think has gotten some. I don't want to say it's super polarizing, a uh, super polarizing hire for Mississippi State in terms of like the fans there and like national media, but but I don't think everyone necessarily agrees on whether this is a good hire or a not so good hire. So, and I think a lot of this was going to depend on like the staff that he brings in, right? And, and what what are his ultimate goals there, right? You know, we know that, you know, there's different things that you can accomplish at a school like Georgia, and there's things that you can accomplish at a school like Mississippi State, you know? Uh, let me hear your thoughts on the, the Jeff Levy hire. I thought it was super interesting. I thought the idea of it was a really good one in terms of getting a guy that runs a nice offense that he can, like, whenever he is there, right, you don't have to worry about your coordinators leaving to other jobs, like your offense coordinator specifically. Like he can have a complex office where he can come and recruit good quarterbacks to come in and play in a quarterback-friendly system and put up points in an SEC West where there is a talent gap between you and most of the higher-end teams in the SEC, And but you can still get some wins because of that explosive office, because it is hard to prepare for every week for these SEC teams. He's obviously familiar with the conference um, he was at Ole Miss with, with Lane Kiffin for a couple of years. And he was at Oklahoma, obviously the past two years there with Dylan Gabriel. Yeah. It's, I, I, I thought it was interesting. I know there's some baggage there. I'm, I'm not going to quite get into the off field stuff with it, but strictly on the field. I mean, we'll see. I, I think there's obviously a lot more question marks than there are answers with him, but that is with every, coach. like, you don't know, no, nobody's a sure thing, right? Just about nobody is. And, and yeah, Jeff Levy. It's interesting. I, I the reality of Mississippi State is like it is one of the worst jobs in the SEC. It's still a great job, and it's still lured a, a power five, very successful coordinator um, at a, at a premier school like Oklahoma to be become your head coach. So obviously, it wasn't it's not too bad of a job. But we'll see what he can do um, in the transfer portal and with the coaching staffs, and, and we'll get into some of that right now. Look, and I, and I think uh, coaching staff wise, I I think he's done a pretty good job, right? You you retain David Turner. Let's talk David Turner for a second. And uh, for that's such snaps. That's such snaps. Snaps. There. Snaps. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the defensive line coach that's there at Mississippi State last year. And he's been at Mississippi State a few other times as well. Notable names that he's coached. All right. Chris Jones, Pernell McPhee, uh, uh, Fletcher Cox, uh, Preston Smith, and then Jeffrey Simmons as well. I believe uh, he actually helped recruit. Was he with Jeffrey Sweat Simmons. too? Uh, I don't know if that sweat. he was with Sweat. I don't think he was with Sweat. But he definitely recruited uh, Jeffrey Simmons, who ultimately became first-round draft pick. So, yeah, he has certainly coached some really good defensive lines. I think that's one of the things that, like, at Mississippi State, if you can have an offense like Jeff Levy's that can get you some explosive plays at times, and, and if you just have a defense that's mean and can get off the field at times and create negative plays, I, I think that's a recipe for success. And we saw it. Like, you, you had a great offensive mind in Dan Mullen. Right, with David Turner as your defensive line coach, and you had a mean, nasty defensive line, right? That could get off the field when they needed to, and, and that was a really, really good team in 2015. It's a really, really good team. So, and you didn't have to have elite receivers. I don't think any of those receivers got drafted. You didn't have to have elite running backs. You didn't have to have an elite offensive line. You just had a good system and a good quarterback. That's all you need. So, um, in terms of the transfer portal, of course, you lose Will Rogers. As a quarterback, yep. uh, in some people's eyes, that's pretty tough. I, I think that's I think they can live with that, right? Will Will Rogers, you know, the only success that he's really had has been in that air raid, uh, Mike Leach air raid. So it'll be interesting to see where Will Rogers goes. Love Will Rogers as a player. I think he could end up finding a home somewhere really nice, and I think he could succeed and thrive. But I don't think Jeff Levy is hitting the panic button. I don't think Mississippi State fans are hitting the panic button at all. I think Xavier Thomas is a bigger loss in the transfer portal receiver, uh, sophomore breakout. Now he's he's I don't I wouldn't say he's like elite necessarily, but he's a good football player. You know he's a very very good football player. So I'm uh, and I don't know as Griffin entered the transfer portal as well. Uh, if he ends up entering um, the transfer portal, I'm not sure about that. I do believe um one good thing about that coaching staff is you do retain you know a fan favorite guy, um. It's a wide receiver coach, uh, Chad Bumfus, right? Chad Bumfus, I believe. So he obviously helped in the breakout of Xavier Thomas. I believe he – um. so so that maybe I just because he's in the trench portal or he now his intention to go doesn't mean he's, he can he can still come back, obviously. Um, and a guy like that caliber, you, you'll, you'd welcome him back there for sure for Mississippi State. 
Yeah, but also I don't think a Mississippi State wide receiver has been drafted in the last like 10 years. So this program is still thrive without elite receivers. So I'm, yeah. I'm okay with that. I will say the more polarizing hire that Jeff Levy has made thus far is hiring Cody Kennedy, uh, formerly known as Arkansas's offensive line coach. Uh, in 2021, when he came there, right, Arkansas had an unbelievable offensive line. They ran the ball for like a white year, right? Rocket Sanders was on the forefront of that as well, KJ Jefferson. And he was, he was a Jim Broyles Award finalist, semifinalist, I believe. 2022, it got a little worse. And 2023, we saw this past year, it was not good. So uh, the argument to be made there is that the offensive line got worse as he went there. But I, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily a bad hire, right? I mean, just... I'll say, I'll say I, it's like... At, at we'll a, see how it works out. I think Arkansas is a very similar program as Mississippi State in terms of like their landscape of the SEC, where they are in the hierarchy of the things. I do think Cody Kennedy did need a break, but like, like, but both sides I think are going to benefit from this. I, I think Cody Kennedy, you know, can still have success at Mississippi State for sure. I do think Sam Pittman and, and that staff is having a lot of changes there. I do think change is needed for sure with the disappointing season Arkansas has had. But at the same time, like with a creative offense coordinator like Jeff Levy, yes, O line is important for sure. But at the same time, like you can still limit. You, you're you can still like like you know, get by with a limited O-line because you can scheme around it because you have quick passes or quick explosive run uh, or creative running plays, if that makes sense. Um, I do want to move, turn the attention over to the defensive side of the ball. Uh, just announced this morning, I believe, right, is the defensive coordinator they hired, Coleman Hutzler from Alabama, right? He was their special teams coordinator and outside linebacker coach. Um, I don't Pretty know outside if Outside linebackers call- that he coached. I, I don't know if he can call defense, but I know he can recruit. I, I mean, he knew Levy from Ole Miss, right? He might run a similar scheme from DJ Durkin or obviously Kevin Steele. They're learning from uh, two, I guess, respected minds in, in the profession. But you got guys like Keon Keeley. <laughs> you got guys like Keon Keeley, right? Obviously, top three player nationally. He brought him from Alabama. Zach Pickens at South Carolina, where he proved he can get a high-level talent like Zach Pickens, who's yep. now in the NFL with the Chicago Bears at a – you know, play not just because it's Alabama. And then he got, he got a guy like Zion Grady, right? Look ahead to the 2025 class. He's an elite five-star prospect there. Um, so obviously he got the foot in the door with, with one of the, the top prospects in the Southeast for 2025 class. I, th- I think it's interesting. I, I think you mentioned it like if you're hiring an offense coordinator coach, right? You expect him to get the offense down. That's his job, his responsibility. You believe in the success of the offense. The defense coordinator position is such a big hire for you. What, what do you think about this? I, I think it's a good hire. I mean, look, just just if you can just get a couple more recruits, right? And like if you have enough, like a Mississippi State, like I do think it, you should value development over recruiting, but you have David Turner, right? So if you have David Turner in there uh, as a developmental guy, uh, depending on all who else you have in your defense back coach and linebacking coaching room, if you can just get a good recruiter in there that can bring, you know, maybe that four-star in-state talent that would maybe otherwise go to Ole Miss or LSU or AM, and you can retain them, and then you get David Turner's hands on them, like it, that that's a recipe for success for sure. So I I, I do like the hire. Uh, again, we don't I don't know how we can call it defense. To be honest, I have no idea. I have no idea it'll, if it'll work out at all. But uh, you know, you, I think Jeff Levy is doing what he can to, you know assemble a pretty decent staff right now and uh we'll we'll see how it turns out so let me ask you this now of course before we get into grades right let's talk about expectation okay wait wait real quick before we get that can i mention one more staff staffing change oh, uh but yeah. before we move on from that totally. um so a guy like daniel mcbath or Dar- i'm sorry darcel mcbath was their cornerbacks coach at mississippi state and they have had a run of really really good corners and put some good players in the nfl he was not retained. He had a chance to interview for it with Jeff Levy and, and stay on. And he had some opportunities last year to leave and get some high level coaching jobs as well. But he, he, he was not retained. I'm not sure why, what there, I, I, I would have thought that he would have been a, a key piece to add there to keep some continuity, to understand, like, especially a new defense coordinator. Like you have two guys like David Turner and would be Darcel McBeth to help him, you know, adjust to being a play caller take some duties off him and learn the Mississippi state way, you know, um, regardless. So I, um, I, I, I'm sure they'll figure it out. I believe in Coleman Hudson. 
or Coleman Hutzler to be able to, you know, find with his connections to be able to find a good uh, secondaries coach. But I thought that was interesting. I wanted to bring that up before we moved on. Yeah, I agree. I don't know if that's like reactionary this year, but like, because uh, I mean, two years ago when they brought in all those transfers and they also had Emmanuel Forbes, it was a pretty solid secondary. So, uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> what what one year can do to you, but uh, but but look, maybe maybe Jeff Levy, you know, was waiting to bring in Hutzler. I don't know who, who we'll we'll see what Hutzler wants. Probably like one of the things that the the Mississippi State AD probably had a conversation with Jeff Levy about was like you have to keep David Turner. <laughs> like that's just what you have to do. You don't understand or how at least try to. Just, yeah, like the value of David Turner. By the way, David Turner also was at AM as a defensive analyst while well, with Miles Garrett. He was, he was the defensive run game coordinator while Miles Ma- Garrett was there. He's coached at Florida. He's coached at Kentucky, Vanderbilt. Dude, he has lived in the SEC. He's got recruiting ties everywhere. He's yeah. unbelievable. He is yeah. unbelievable. And, and, like, and oh, can't stress yeah. it enough. He's the Elijah Robinson of the Mississippi State staff, and, and they were able to keep him. And I get like, we'll talk about Elijah Robinson when we get to AM with Mike Elko, of course, but. This was a big time, a good start for Jeff Levy. I, in my opinion, you lose Will Rogers. Xavier Thomas enters the transfer portal. He can still come back. Will Rogers is probably on the out the, or out the door. Um, but regardless, I, I think you're you're heading in the right direction here with Jeff Levy. Yeah. All right. So let's get into expectations because we like so there's grades. Like anyone can give a grade right to a coach, mm-hmm. and we'll do that. We'll give a letter grade to to this hire. But let's talk about expectations, right? Because if you give someone an A, right, and they meet your expectations, even if they get fired, because remember, like, a lot of these ADs and a lot of these fan bases get really, you know, pissy when they don't win the number of games that they should, right? Or they they think that they should, right? Yep. And they get fired just because a coach gets fired doesn't, doesn't mean I don't think that they did a good job, you know, or you don't think that they did a good job. So the expectation for Mississippi State is – a bowl game, I think. Six and six. If you can get six and six most years, I think that's a reasonable expectation. Is that the expectation from the fan base necessarily? No, because they see what Ole Miss is doing with Lane Kiffin. And, you know, they're seeing the 10 win seasons. They're seeing nine win seasons. The expectation with Mississippi State should be six and six, seven and five, I think. Just especially in the short term right now, these next couple of years. Yeah, I would not. I uh, could not uh, agree more there, especially with the addition of Oklahoma and Texas making that schedule even harder, especially if they move to a nine game schedule. I mean, the goal for Mississippi State here is to go four and out of conference, right? Hopefully that involves a power five win out of conference. And then you you, you get lucky with your schedule and you and you get two SEC wins. I mean, that that is you're not going to be favored against anyone you probably play for uh, for the near future for sure. And it takes time to build a program back. Obviously, it's just super unfortunate when it happened, you know, just about 12 months ago um, when tragedy just struck this program with the passing of Mike Leach. So obviously like it, it's just hard to rebound from that. And obviously the fans want everything to get back to normal and they deserve it because they've been through so much at the same time. Like I know you're not going to hear it, but the expectation, like a good season for Jeff Levy next year will be six and six. If he goes four and eight, I won't even be mad. I just got to say, okay, can you recruit? Can you get back to a top 30 nationally recruiting? And then every couple of years sprinkle in a top 20 team and then can you you know when you're on conference games compete with some guys don't get blown out right in all of your sec games and then you know maybe upset a team or two every couple of years and and figure out where it goes and, and if you strike gold you build up to a team with hey david tyner has got the d-line cooking right we got a quarterback we love here we got a star wide receiver or whatever it is and then you can get built up to a nine a ten win season it's gonna take a while though it's gonna i, th- I think it, it could be a couple of years until mississippi state's really competing sec and SEC games. Yes. So with those expectations and everything that we've talked about and the staff firings and so far we've seen the transfer portal. Now, granted, the recruiting class is not over. The transfer portal is not over. So we actually, there's there's more information to be had. But as of right now, I give this hire an A-, minus, believe it or not. I think this is okay. a good hire. I think just fit in terms of like he's been in the state of Mississippi. Um, he know, I think I think he knows what he's expected to do. And I also think he's hired a pretty good staff retaining David Turner. And I think he's got a really good offense that can win you a couple of games. So if the expectation is six and six, seven and five, I think Jeff Levy can get you there. That's why I give it an A minus. 
Okay. Yeah. So I like that. I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit lower on that because I do think there is a pretty big risk reward here because of some of that off the field baggage, because of some places where he's been and what's happened after he's left. Um, if you want to look into that, I'm not going to talk about it on air, but obviously you can do your own research on that, but I'm going to go B minus here. I, I think it's, I think it's a good hire. I think B minus is not a bad grade here. I, I think that you know, with the right pieces, with the good staff, I believe he's building so far, and I trust his offensive mind. I, I think this the floor is pretty high for Mississippi State compared to like what it probably should be, where you are like the thirteenth or fifteenth most talented team in the SEC, which is just a super hard, you know, fence to climb to be able to get wins and to string together bowl game appearances, um, in year in and year out. I, I think it'll be minus, and if he does it, like you said, like. About four and eight, five and seven, year one, but you see progress there offensively. You see some talent coming in. You see them be able to track some some transfer portal names and some recruits. Then then there's upside for this to go higher, obviously. But I'm gonna stick with my B and B minus for right now. Yeah. Now look, if he gets fired a couple seasons down the road after a six and six season, I'm gonna say that my grade was not a bad grade. <laughs> you no. know, just sometimes sometimes the it seats get hot because people fan bases expect more and donors, well, and donors especially crazy and donors expect kind of more with with nil i mean the thing is is here the the expectation here has kind of been it, it's unfair and it's it's just hard to, to wrap your head around it because like if you're an nil donor right a big time booster at one of these, these sec schools especially a lower half sec school and your coach is coming to you like, or your AD is coming to you like, hey, we need more. We need more. We need more. That more is just going to help you compete and maintain your level where you were because everyone else is going up, right? You So you have to don't spend more. You have to donate more to be able to, to, to stay with everybody. Just because you donate more money does not lead to more wins, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, with, with a hire like this, I, I think it's, it, it's a good one uh, for sure. Uh, unfortunately, we talk about the expectation here. A little bit too high compared to what reality actually is. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how Mississippi State fans like him the next couple of years. It sounds like um he's doing a good job so far. I mean, if you can keep David Turner, like and David Turner believes in you to stay in as as head coach there, like that's step one, right? That's step one. 